With all the talk of the great turf war amongst the Splatoon community, ever since the Squid vs Octopus Splatfest got announced in Splatoon 2, there has been a lot of talk about this Splatfest being the Great Turf War 2. This is going to be the second Great Turf War. It will affect the lore of the game. So because of all of that talk, it's got me interested in the first Great Turf War and it's kind of got me wanting to go back and look at the Sunken Scrolls from the first game that did talk about the Great Turf War. And it sort of got me thinking that maybe quite a lot of people out there haven't actually read these Sunken Scrolls just because those people didn't own Splatoon 1 on the Wii U. Not a lot of people own the Wii U. Splatoon 1 has sold less than Splatoon 2, so there are people out there that don't know about the Great Turf War, which is one of the most interesting things about the lore of Splatoon. So what I will be doing in this video is going through all of the Sunken Scrolls that did cover the first Great Turf War. It's also got me thinking that maybe Nintendo will release the single player of the first game on the eShop and have it downloadable for people that didn't buy Splatoon 1 on the Wii U. It would be a great chance for those people to experience the single player of the first game. Maybe they will have it as a separate download on the Switch eShop or maybe it will be like a prequel DLC for Splatoon 2 even though Nintendo have currently said at this moment in time that they don't have any more plans for DLC just releasing the single player of the first game as DLC I could definitely see that happening or maybe Nintendo will release the single player as a standalone thing I could definitely see Nintendo doing that sort of thing Maybe they will have it as like a packaged version in Japan. Just because the Japanese market goes absolutely bonkers for Splatoon. So a packaged version of the single player from the first game. I think that will go down well in the Japanese market. Maybe they could have some sort of extra cutscenes in this single player release. And have it where you see what happens to Encompass Plaza in between Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2 you get to see it get less populated and yeah I think that would be really cool if we got some sort of extra content in there for veterans that would be really cool to see it would be cool if we got to travel to Incopolis Plaza from Incopolis Square and we got to see what it looks like in Splatoon 2 that would be really cool if they did make it as a prequel DLC and to access the single player you have to travel to Incopolis Plaza from the first game. I think that would be really cool if that did happen. But let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section below. Do you think Nintendo will release the single player of the first game as DLC or do you think it will be a standalone thing? Or do you think Nintendo will keep the single player for Splatoon 1 as a Wii U exclusive? I spent a lot of time talking about that idea. Let's just move on to what this video is actually about. And let's just talk about what happened in the Great Turf War. So I will be starting with a Sunken Scroll that does appear later on than the rest of the sunken scrolls that i will be talking about in this video this sunken scroll can be unlocked at stage 16 in the single player of the first game and it shows a young dj octavio and a young captain cuttlefish getting along and this is what the sunken scroll says before the great turf war there were amical relations between the Inklings and Octarians. They couldn't have dreamed that rising sea levels would force them to battle fiercely over the remaining territory. I definitely find this Sunken Scroll interesting just because we get to see DJ Octavio in his humanoid form, which we haven't seen in the single players for both Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2. It's also interesting how Inklings and Octarians, they aren't necessarily enemies all of the time. Before the Great Turf War, they were friends, so it's not inconceivable that the Inklings and Octarians can get along. 
that is something that Nagami has mentioned in interviews as well. Inklings and Octarians aren't necessarily enemies to each other, they can get along, they can coexist. Moving on to the Sunken Scroll that can be unlocked on stage 12 of the single player from the first game. The first battles of the Great War ended in victory for the Octarian forces. The diligent Octarians easily dominated the Inklings who were unable to wake up early enough in the morning to defend themselves. That is sort of similar to what we have learned about in terms of Octarians, how they are more serious, whereas the Inklings, they are more carefree. And that definitely did play out in that sunken scroll where the Inklings didn't wake up early enough and they lost the first battles of the Great War because of that, because they weren't serious about the war. Moving on to the Sunken Scroll that can be unlocked at stage 13 in the single player of the first game. Heralded by loud explosions, the great Octo weapons quickly stormed the Inklings central stronghold. Victory for the Octarians seemed all but certain, but due to a plug being carelessly pulled from its socket, their hopes were dashed onto the sunken scroll that can be unlocked at stage 14 in the single player of Splatoon 1. Lady Luck shone down on the Inklings and historians today agree that the Inklings victory over the Octarians was mostly due to their superior number of limbs. Now we saw Pearl sort of reference this in the Splatfest dialogue for Squid vs Octopus. She sort of talked about how historians agree that squids are better than octopi or octopodes because they have a greater number of limbs. I'm wondering whether Pearl learned about the Great Turf War through those historians and that is why she did mention that squids are better than octopi because they do have a greater number of limbs. On to the final sunken scroll that I will be covering in this video. It can be unlocked at stage 15. This is the only existing photograph of the legendary Squid Beat Splatoon. The young man folding his arms appears to be the leader. That is of course Captain Cuttlefish. When this picture was taken, the Great Turf War had been raging on for over a year. This image shows Sheldon's granddad and Moses Schellendorf. So those sunken scrolls were definitely interesting to read. I definitely do find that part of the lore really cool and I think it would be really cool if we got to play in the Great Turf War or if this Splatfest is to be known as the Great Turf War 2.0. I think it would be really cool if we got to play in the Great Turf War 2.0 and our actions have an impact on what happens in the Great Turf War 2.0. It would be cool if the teams were decided based on what team you picked for this Splatfest. I think that would be really cool if that did happen. I think it would be cool if there were sort of two stories to a possible Great Turf War 2.0 but I think it would be really cool if we got to play in the Great Turf War that we did learn about in the Sunken Scrolls from the first game but say like if we can't play in the Great Turf War I think it would be really cool if we got to play in a possible Great Turf War 2.0 let me know your thoughts about this in the comment section below but that is it for this video and I will see you in the next one, hopefully.